I'm your host, Shin Ayong. In season two, we are bringing the world to you. We have 12 contestants from 12 different countries, and it's your chance to learn about all different cultures right here on Bring It On. As usual, we are joined by our fabulous judges, Brian. Hello. Hello. Woo. How are you doing? <laughs> and Taro is back from Finland. Yes, hello. Woo. Taro. And of course, we have Amy and John from season one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's meet our presenters, our top three. Chun Guan from China, Jesse from Canada, and One Kind representing Korea. Yeah. 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 Now, Taro is back from Finland. How have you been? We missed you. Oh, I missed you too. Oh. Yeah. I just, you know, I participated in one conference there and, oh, you know, wow. did some work and also enjoyed my mom's cooking. So I maybe, oh. you know, Ooh. put on some pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, the, it's, it was the blueberry season in Finland. Oh. You can, can you imagine blueberry pie, fresh oh. blueberries, blueberry pudding? Hold on. Did you bring anything, anything for us? I, can, I wanted to bring. I, brought, I just gave you the gum. I have oh. some gum. She brought, yeah, she brought us like finished, finished gum. Oh, yeah, gum. it was good. You know, Finland is famous in Korea for this gum. Right, yeah. Xylitol. Yeah, xylitol gum, which is good for your teeth. That's why I brought Originally some of this. Originally from Finland, okay. Yes, it is. And now we are left with the top three presenters. Let's meet them. Chun Guan, Jesse, and One Kind. Welcome, survivors. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. This is the semi-final, so the stakes are high. Yeah, they sure are. But um, I, we're, we've probably all prepared, you know what I mean? We're, we're used to being in this spot. Me and One Kind, we're on season one, so we have a little bit of experience. And my boy right here is an amazing presenter, so I think, you know, we're gonna do great. Right. We are left with the best of the best presenters, so you three are going to need some luck to survive. Mm, yeah. Because one person we will have to say goodbye, and we are so close to the finals. Our judges are a little bit nervous, I feel like, today, because the stakes are be. high, and be. the fate of these three well, presenters the are in <laughs> your hands, right? So we are ready for the competition. We are all pumped up, but first, let's start with the rules. Here are the rules. Only one presenter will be crowned the champion. 12 presenters. Each week, a team of three will present their items. Third place of each team will compete in the redemption round. The winner of the redemption round then joins in the competition. After the redemption round, the presenter coming in last in each episode will be eliminated. In the 12th episode, the final two will duke it out for the grand prize. There can be only one winner. is joined by viewers from all around the world. So before we begin, let's warm up a little bit by learning about Chungwon, Jesse, and One Kind's homelands. So Jesse, Canada is a huge land, right? It is. Full of it's people uh, from all over the world. Yeah, very multicultural, second biggest country in the world. But our population is very small, actually. It's like a 32 million about, which is equivalent to Tokyo in its surrounding environment. So when you can imagine, like Tokyo is one city in Japan and the entire area of Canada has about the same amount of people. So mm. a lot of wilderness and dangerous animals out there. So you gotta be on your toes. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> As the saying goes, we are the world and we are beginning to learn more and more from each other and respecting more cultures and that is what Bring It On is all about. Yeah. So, let's get the competition started. Let's start with today's topic. is support system for foreigners, so let's test how much we know about that with a little quiz. Little known facts of the three countries. Let's start with Korea. 
Korea has blank classes for foreigners. Yes, Amy. Social integration. Social integration classes. Did you actually take some of that? Yeah, you're talking to Taru, right? No, I have not. <laughs> because it doesn't fit my schedule. But I do want to take the social integration classes. Mm. They give like Korean classes and then also how to adapt to society and know the norms and values. Oh. Korea has twerking classes. <laughs> <laughs> twerking classes. Yeah, you gotta know how to twerk these days, man. Oh my gosh, can you just show us? I don't go to What is classes. twerking? What is twerking? I don't know. I don't Miley know. Miley Cyrus does. Can you show us? Can you <laughs> go show on YouTube us? and click Miley Cyrus. No, twerk. no, we don't have the time. Could you please show us, Brian? I can't. You twerk. brought it up. It wouldn't be the first time oh, you've yeah, twerked you on the show up, either. Brian. I'd rather I'm see Amy that twerking. Chungwon's gonna follow me and do the same Chung thing. Chungwon, can you can you twerk? Can you twerk? I think Chungwon can twerk. You know what? I think Brian, <laughs> if you show what twerking is, what I think Chungwon would definitely show us. Oh man. So Brian is gonna give us twerking lessons for free. I don't even know how to twerk. I just know you have to move your butt. And you kind of like bend over a little bit, stick your butt out, and just shake. And you start. Oh, make sure your butt is like twerking. Oh, twerking. Oh! Oh! It's no? Okay, guys, go back to your seat. like, I learned that when I was a kid. That's all you got? Oh, man. I was born twerking. Has twerking classes for foreigners. That's the right answer? Yeah. That is not the answer that we are looking okay. for. What? <laughs> okay, one Language. kind, the answer is more practical, right? Yeah. You gotta move to get one place to another. Yeah. Transportation system classes to teach for the subway classes? Transportation system classes kind for of, foreigners. Kind of, you almost there. Okay. Really? Driving, driving. Driving lessons is crazy. Oh. Korea has driving classes okay. for foreigners. Now, is this free of charge, one kind? Uh, I don't think it's free, but uh, yeah, as you know, like I said, uh, there's uh, you know a large amount of multicultural families in Korea, and uh, they need to get around to places and get their driver's license. So yeah, to provide driving classes. Right, driving lessons are provided in ten different languages oh, wow. in Korea. So mm -hmm. if you guys need driving lessons, I don't think it's free though. Yeah. Take advantage of this system. This is an <laughs> example of the driving classes okay. um, provided in Korea for foreigners. Cool. Let's move on to the next country, Canada. In Canada, the top three blank companies are owned by foreigners. The top three coffee. Top three coffee. Oh. You're actually somewhat close. Yeah, it's like actually Sam surprisingly and close and to the, the answer. Pancakes. Pancakes. No. Now we're a little off. Mm. Beverage. It's food. It is a kind of beverage. Kind of beverage. Mm. That beer. is beer companies. Daru got it right okay. again. Wow. Wow. It's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in roll. Canada, yeah. the top three beer companies are owned by Ooh. foreigners. So yes, the top three beer companies in Canada are owned by foreigners, showing that. You know, Canadians have a really big love for beer, but it, it shows that we're very open to foreign countries' companies entering into our market and distributing their products. Okay, so we've done with Canada. Now let's move on to the next country, China. China boasts the highest average blank for foreigners in the world. Boasts the highest average. Medical care? Medical care. Medical insurance? Insurance. No, that is incorrect. That? Huh. Income for foreigners in the world? That is correct. Oh! Salary oh, wow. for foreigners. In I'm the educated. World. Now, China boasts the highest average salary for foreigners in the world. Brian got it correct. <laughs> yes, now, Chunguan, is this true? <laughs> it's true. More than 25% foreigners make more than $300,000 per year. That's oh. big oh, money. That is big money. US yeah. dollars, 300,000 yeah. US dollars. So one in four. Yeah, so come to China. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's go. Okay, so it looks like there are some very friendly systems for foreigners. So let's get down to the main event. The presentation starts. Let's start by checking today's items. As usual, we will start with a little teaser, starting with you, Chingguan. Can we get a drum roll for Chingguan, please?
짜자잔. Oh, it's a bank book. book. Yeah. yeah, bank book. Oh, it's a oh. bank book. Is it yours? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chungwon's clue is a bank book. Now, what can we know from that? Well, he was talking about foreigners making a lot of money. Mm. So maybe it's something to do with investment in China? I don't know. Mm. Something like that. Are we close, Chungwon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Close. Investment. Investment. What about investment then? Mm. Amy? Savings. Some kind of specific foreigner savings program. Oh, like a bank account. Oh, oh yes, uh, John. <laughs> subsidized government programs for investment in China. Mm. Oh, I think that was the most intelligent thing we've ever said on our show. <laughs> okay, now we have some good guesses. I feel like we're pretty close, so let's hold on to that thought and move on to Jesse. Yes, I will unveil the clue in three, two, one. Three, two, one. Oh. So cool. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> so it's a little non-threatening, kind Canadian airplane just going about its own business, oh. flying through the sky. Okay, so Jesse's clue <laughs> is an airplane. Hmm, what can we guess from that? Well, okay, Canada is such a huge country that yeah. I think you have to, you know, use the airplane, you know, to mm. move from one place to another. Maybe foreigners get a special discount oh. or even free flights, you know, if Ooh. they are working in the... Well, the place? Mm. Uh, a huge portion of Canada is made up of international people, so that would oh. mean like half of our population would okay. get <laughs> discounts. So no, but good guess. Okay. Yes. Let's hold that thought and move on to one kind's clue. Can I get a drum roll? Is that Seoul? Yeah. Oh, it's a map of Seoul. Yeah, let, okay. me, let me show the people in the back. Yeah, because they got to see that too. All right. Okay, so map of Seoul. What is one kind trying to tell us? How about it's the global village centers around Seoul? I know uh, there's one in Songbuk and there's one in Gangnam. Maybe they have a few more. One in Itaewon? Yeah. 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 Mm. That's it. That's it. Oh, she got it correct? <gasps> yeah. oh, she just got off the plane to oh, fire. Cool. So could yeah. you please tell us your topic So once yeah, more. basically I'm going to be talking about the uh, global centers in Korea. You know how foreigners come to Korea and they have no clue on how to live, you know, a great life. Mm -hmm. So you have questions about like visa, applying to school, or learning Korean. Yeah. Just getting to know Korean culture, this is the place for foreigners. Yeah. Okay, so that was one kind's topic. Now, Jesse, what is your topic? So my topic is definitely related to education, and it is Canada support systems for students who come to study in our country mm -hmm. and the various programs we offer and the benefits available to anybody who wants to study in Canada. Man, you should have had a book then. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured because they're, you know, they're flying over, they land, they're ready for their education and a greater life in Canada. Mm. Okay, so that was Jesse's topic. Now, Chungwon, what were you trying to tell us with that bank book? Uh, China is a new land of opportunities. Mm. The government offers various kinds of scholarship. Yeah, today's topic is scholarship. Wow. Scholarship systems in China. Okay, now we are ready to learn more about China, Canada, and Korea. But first, let's check the scoring system. Judges, 30%. Studio audience, 20%. Bring it on application, 30%. Website, 10%. And the final pitch counts for 10%. The presenters will be ranked first, second, and third places. Now, if you're watching the live streaming of our studio recording, don't forget to vote, but also send us your comments and suggestions. We love hearing from you. Am I right, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Before we start the presentations, let's check out the initial responses. Who's leading the poll so far? Let's find out. Remember, 
viewers, this is the semi-finals. Your vote can determine the fate of three of our presenters. One will have to go home today, and the other two will be our finalists. So this is an important episode, and your vote is more important than ever. Without further ado, let's call up our first presenter. Chungwon, you're up first. Hello, my name is Chen. Today I will present about Chinese policy for international students. Follow, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I like hip hop. Hip hop is my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my first mixtape. List now. Yo, let's go. Oh, yo, yeah. swag. Swag. <laughs> Check the sound. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jin Chun Chen, the hottest place to study in China. Yo, the students gather to study up to the final. Where the students are all in China. Yo, generous product plus by China, and less benefit for the foreigner guys. <laughs> you less care, no money, we say it or dies. Priceless passion for studies, enough for price. Yeah, let's get it started. Yeah, today's winner is me. <laughs> yeah. My genius, my Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A music video right there. I will talk about number one, why invest in foreign students? Number two is current status in number, and then details of policy. For the first question, there are two main reasons, and first is to make profits. The education is a huge business field, and then is to make international students pro-China person. Various foreign students are in China. About 60% is Asian and the other is American, European. What about the country? The most foreign students living in China is Korea. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, let's see the scholarship who offers that. First is the central government provincial government and university. When it comes to central government, there are many scholarships, as you can see. Uh, it's notable for PhD scholarship. It's only for Chinese expert. Mm. 500 million RMB was invested in Central Government Scholarship in 2008. In 2011, China was the 10th country with most number of foreign students. Provincial government is doing some interesting program for foreign students called Mengxing Zhejiang with a slogan of studying in Zhejiang and start up in Zhejiang. Next for the universities, they have three main programs for foreign students, mentoring system, various scholarship program, and accommodation and health care system. The China is newly set the goal named study abroad in China project. Until and time is up, I'm going to have to stop you oh, right yeah. there. Mm. Now, you didn't finish your presentation in time, so this could be harmful of your chances with the judges. Let's hear from our judges. Any questions from Chungwon? Yeah, there's a lot of incentive to go to China. I think it looks great, all these scholarship programs. But what about when you get there as an international student? Do you have some kind of support programs? Like, if you're not familiar with the language, is there some kind of group that mm. can help you? Oh. 
There are many program. Share house program. Yeah, Swag. Maybe share house and many program are in China. How did you like the video? I thought it was creative. That was like a vines right now on the screen. I was like, yeah. wow, he actually went out, did his own little music video. Just don't put it on YouTube and getting like a billion hits, cause then you're gonna be too famous for us to bring back. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the tattoos. All right, the Pyongyang yeah, tattoo. Like, yeah. yeah, that was good. And then I like how he went. You know, a lot of rappers in the field they want to go like. Uh, I don't. I want to say they're cocky into themselves, but they're very proudful about themselves. And when he was like, "Yeah, I am the winner," I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> he had that pride and confidence in himself. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right. Was that all your idea, Chingguan? Yes. Oh, wow. okay. Wow. You got to give him credit for that, right? Yes. Yeah. Any more questions about the content or his presentation style, judges? I have one more question. Um, he mentioned the, uh, what is it? Uh, he mentioned that uh, the goal is uh, of the scholarships, the goal is to make uh, the students more pro-China. What exactly do you mean? Pro-China? Yeah. Uh, Foreign, the foreign students is uh, alive messengers in China, and Chinese government impressed them to have a good image in China. Okay, um, let's take some questions from our studio audience. Do you guys have any questions from Chungwon? Yes. Um, you said that uh, so the scholarships is just for just the Chinese field, or are there other fields as well to, for the scholarships? Other fields. Like, is it just in like Chinese language and Chinese culture field, or is it in other fields like engineering? Because there are many very uh, kinds of scholarship in China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all the time we have for Chun Guan. That was a very interesting presentation. Where it's a little unfortunate that he did not get to finish his presentation, but it's all part of the competition. Yes, so it is. let's find out what the audience thought of Chun Guan's presentation. Studio audience, please get out your smartphones and get ready to vote. Now it's time to check our judges' points. So far, no, nobody voted for Chungon, but you still have time to make last minute changes. Your vote becomes final on my count of three. Three, two, one. And the results? Let's find out. One. <laughs> One out of four. Only Amy has voted for Chun Guan. Mm. Okay, let's hear from you, Amy, first. Why did you vote for Chung Guan? I did give him a vote because uh, I think you were well prepared. You memorized the facts. You had some good slides in there. I liked the visuals. And of course, the music video was dope. So, I mean, you've got a good package going, but I don't know if you're going to make it through without the votes of the other people who are taking phone calls during film. I didn't answer no phone wow. calls. Wow. Wow. Just kidding. I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, overall, I think you did an amazing job, and I really wanted to give you my vote because mm. English is a very difficult language to speak, and I think you're doing a great job. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. Chungwon, it's a little low on the points from our judges, but you still have the final pitch, right? Yes. Okay, so you don't have to be discouraged. Okay, as point. much as we like Chungwon's presentation, the judges. Only one, only Amy voted for Chun Guan. Now let's find out the studio points for Chun Guan. From the judges, 7.5 points. From the audience, 14 points, with a total of 21.5 points. Good job, Chun Guan. Thank you. Okay, now this is the semi-final, so the judges and our studio audience are being very careful about their votes now. Let's see what they have in store for Jesse. Jesse, you're up next. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bring It On. I am Jesse Day, and I'm going to talk to you about studying overseas in Canada. But first, let's take a look at a boy whose life was forever changed by his Canadian education. <laughs> <laughs> a boy who dreamed of becoming a master chef, but who did not possess the skills. <laughs> Having a little trouble there. I don't think that's acting. <laughs> <laughs> My mom! Richie, that's enough! <laughs> How can you become a chef? That's it! I've decided I'm going to study in Canada. So time goes by as I'm studying in Canada. <laughs> wow, 10 years have gone by. Oh, that's smart! <laughs> mom, I'm back! <laughs> mom, I've got something to show you. Here's what I've learned to do in Canada. Look at that. <laughs> My mother is very pleased. So let's take a look at some statistics now. So the number of international students in Canada continues to grow. We see here on a chart between the year 2000 and 2010. I'd like you to take a look at university and other post-secondary, which makes up the vast majority. There must be a reason for this, so let's find out more. So, Canada, a diverse, multicultural place where people from all over the world are welcomed to study. Whatever your major, whatever the skill you want to train in, we've got you covered with Canadian education. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the benefits of studying in Canada. It's affordable. Amongst all of the countries in the world, it's one of the more affordable for tuition as well as living expenses. The UN consistently votes Canada as one of the safest and best places in the world to live. It's got world-class education. Canada is the number one spender on education amongst OECD countries, and it shows. Abundant research opportunities. Canada education focuses a lot on research, so if that's your field, you will find abundant chances. So here's another reason. Canada was voted this year as the most reputable country in the world by RepTrack. And the Chief Marketing Officer of Destination Canada said it's a testament to the global desire to come and visit our country. Now, Canada's earned this reputation for a reason, and as a student visiting our country, you can depend on that reputation. If you're still not convinced, there's more. So, how about scholarships for international students to help fund your education? How about learning another language? You may know that Canada is a bilingual country, but what you may not know is it's considered a world leader in language training. The possibility of permanent residence. After you finish your education and get some work experience, you can be approved for permanent residence in the country. And the thing I'm most proud of, tolerance to all races and religions. As I mentioned, Canada is a very diverse, multicultural society, and you will never be discriminated against because of what you believe in or where you come from. And I'd like to finish with a quote by David Cohen, the Canadian government attorney, who said, Canada wants students because Canada is all about nation building young, intelligent newcomers who have proven they have the credentials and means to assimilate are a big part of that. In short, Canada wants students to come here, study, contribute socially and economically, and stay here permanently. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse, for your presentation. Now let's take some questions. Judges. I agree with you that language education is a big draw, but I think one of the problems is, like, say when Koreans go to Canada, yeah. they stay within a group of Koreans and only speak Korean outside of the actual language course. Are right. there any ideas that you may have to help combat that so they can really assimilate and learn the language? Yeah, if we're talking about Koreans going there, personally, I made so many friends with Korean students when I was there, and it was awesome because they got to practice their English, they taught me a little bit of Korean. So I think it's important for the students themselves to kind of break out of mm. their, their mold, you know what I mean, and try to kind of reach out because Canadian people are really open and friendly, and 
we are very interested in other cultures, so we're approachable. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I would recommend making friends with the locals. Mm. That's the best way to, to assimilate the language. So how about the universities in Canada? You yeah. know, uh, from your slides, I understood that you know, most of the uh, international students are at the university level. Right. So uh, how is the university system? Is it like in Korea that you have the top uni universities and not so desired universities? Or is it like in Finland like where all the universities are pretty much the same level? So anywhere you go, you will get recognized and you will have no problems in finding a job later. Yeah, it's more like the Korean system a little bit. We have mm -hmm. top-ranked universities and we have medium ones and lower ones. But Canadian credentials, diplomas and certificates are recognized internationally the same as the Commonwealth countries and the United States. So although it's definitely better to obviously enter, the admission process is going to be harder for a top-ranked university. Mm -hmm. But no matter where you graduate from, your credentials are recognized worldwide. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. If there isn't any more questions from our judges, let's take some questions from our audience. Audience, do you have any questions for Jesse? Uh, over there. Oh. I'm just really curious about the employment in Canada. Like, can you study there in, for university and can you get employed at a big company or, you know, how the government handles um, foreigners like looking for jobs yes, and stuff yes, like that. So while you're taking your education at Canadian universities, it is actually legal to work part time and take a part time job. So that then gives you the vital work experience you need along with your education. So then after you finish graduating, you have both work experience and a diploma or certificate. So in that case, it's easier to then find another employer. And then, as I mentioned, if you eventually have in mind to be a permanent resident of Canada, those things combined really help you out in your application. Okay, so I feel like Jesse always has the answers prepared. Like, it's like you expect the questions in your head and then you just, you know, you're like always flawless in your uh, answers. Thanks. I mean, it takes He's a lot a of research to do a presentation like this. I think that's why. So through my research, I end up coming up, you know, reading all this different information. And mm -hmm. so when people ask me, it's kind of something that I've already been reading online during my research okay, period. Okay, so that was <laughs> a good presentation from Jesse and also a very flawless Q&A session from Jesse. Now let's find out if the studio audience actually liked his presentation. Studio audience, please get out your smartphones and get ready to vote. Now judges, let's check your points. So far, only Amy, fellow Canadian, only Amy has <laughs> voted for Jesse. You still have time to change your mind, but your vote becomes final on my count of three. Three, two, one. Jesse from Canada. And the results? Let's find out. One. Oh, and a perfect score from our judges. Congratulations, Jesse. Now, this Thank is you. huge. This is huge. Now, let's hear from our judges why you all voted for Jesse. Starting with you, Brian. I voted for Jesse because it's flawless. He's always. Uh, knowing what he's talking about, you know, he's got the knowledge. Today was the first time I actually heard him stutter a little bit, but that actually yeah. liked about him because I realized he's only human. He's not a <laughs> robot, you know. He started off with that little Barney voice, but then still, <laughs> again, he went back to his normal voice, which I liked a mm -hmm. lot. It made him look natural. Now let's see if Jesse's magic worked with the studio audience as well. Here are the studio points for Jesse. From the judges, 30 points. From the audience, 11.2 points for a total of 41.2 points from our studio. This is a pretty high score. Mm. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, but we still have the online votes and the final pitch coming. And Bring It On is a survival presentation show, and there is plenty of room for turnaround in our scoring system. So, so far in our studio, Jesse is in the lead, but your vote can change things. So, it's not too late to participate. Go on to the Arirang TV website and our application and cast your vote. Last up, we have One Kind. One Kind, you also have four minutes and a Q&A session to follow.
Hey, it's your boy Wan Kai from the Lecture Boys representing Korea, and today I'm gonna be talking about something global, the Global Center, but let's check out this hot clip right now. And as you can see, that's a familiar face. It's out all for Rwanda. And being a foreigner in Korea, sometimes we get lost. But look who comes to rescue oh, uh, out that... <laughs> It's your boy, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, I'm trying to help them find out directions because as a foreigner, we get lost in Korea. And sometimes we even get sick. We want to know where <laughs> the best hospitals are at. We want to know the best insurance, health insurance, and I'm here to guide him. I know you can get pregnant like that. <laughs> so Superman to the rescue. And as you can see, I tried to carry him on my back, but he was too heavy, so I carried him on my shoulders. <laughs> And sometimes as a foreigner, we don't know how to throw away our trash. And guess who comes out? Yes, it's no other than... He's wondering how to throw away the trash, and there's Superman again to facilitate him on how to throw away the trash, because recycling in Korea is very important. All right, now just like Superman, the Global Center will come to your rescue, and this is a center for foreigners who are living in Korea. And there are about 1.7 million foreigners in Korea right now. Wow. And you can find global centers throughout Korea. Now, what is the main purpose of a global center? Well, it's to provide a variety of services to support foreigners so they can get familiar with the Korean culture and the Korean people. And through these global centers, uh, if you need counseling for a visa, if you want to apply to school, if you want a job, or if you want a driver's license, or medical insurance, I mean, the list goes on and on. They have answers to your questions. And uh, through uh, these global centers, they have lots of uh, various programs uh, where you can connect, get connected with the community. For instance, rice cooking classes, Taekwondo classes, uh, Korean classes, which are free. And we're gonna check out another video. And uh, basically, this is a video of a lady from Uzbekistan. She can't speak Korean, but there's someone that speaks her language and she has questions about the visa. Passport to me, naka visa to guard the day, we took a gun to Borkirishka, Kanaka, Borkirish, Sorashke Kilodo. This is Gabriel Passport. And as you see, if you have any questions about getting a driver's license or getting a home, they all have the questions or answers for your questions. Now, uh, like I mentioned a while ago, there's seven global centers in Seoul. And if you can't make it in person, you can make uh, a phone call asking your question. And uh, you can also go online. And every Sunday, there is someone that calls you to make sure you're on the right track. And you can visit anytime, Monday through Friday, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, if you can't speak Korean, don't worry, because there's employees that speak various languages, English, Chinese, Japanese, the list goes on. And they have specialists and professionals uh, that uh, have, you know, profession in various fields that you know that you're looking for or you know if you have any questions and through these uh, global centers uh, you'll get a better understanding of Korean culture and you can have a much easier life in Korea and uh, that's the end of my presentation thank you for uh, checking it out peace thank you one kind for your presentation now let's see if we have questions from our judges I can give a little, you know, one piece of information. I'm sure you're aware of it as well. You know, the, you mentioned the startup courses and stuff. Right. I've also been on a startup course. And if you are uh, starting your own company here mm -hmm. in Seoul, uh, you can apply for a free office space for six months, or it can be extended wow. to one year. And they have those somewhere in, near Coex, somewhere there, and also in Yoido. Yeah. So I think it's a very good service. I well. Uh, wow. So well, there you go. I was going to ask about that and Taro answered. Yep. <laughs> Studio audience, please get out your smartphones and get ready to vote. Now it's time to check our judges' points. So far, nobody has voted for one kind's presentation. Mm. There's still time to change your mind, judges, but it becomes final on my count of three. Three, two, one. 
Sunkind from Korea. And the results? Let's find out. One. <laughs> oh. And another perfect score Thank for you. One Kind from our judges. Good job, Thank One you. Kind. Amy, do you have anything to say about One Kind's presentation? Congrats, you earned these four points. I mean, Thank you it. worked hard for it and you brought it again. So this is going to be really tough today uh, to see who wins and even next week too. So keep doing what you're doing. I think you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Let's find out if our studio audience agree with them. Ooh. Here are the studio points for one kind. From the oh. judges, 30 oh. points. From the audience, 16.8 points with Thank a total you. of 46.8 points. That is a high score. Good job, one kind. Thank you so much. Okay, there is money. still the online vote and the final pitch that we haven't considered. So there is time to participate. Now, Bring It On Studio recording is being streamed live on our YouTube channels. And a lot of people are sending us comments. So I will share with you some of them. One user wrote that, I am a student from Peru preparing to study abroad. I heard that Finland and Germany has great programs, but... Through today's show, I also learned a lot about other country systems. Thank you. Now let's get back to the competition. It's time for the final pitch. Now let's get back to the competition. It's time for the final pitch. We will give one minute to each of our presenters and after listening to what they have to say, our judges will award one extra point to just one presenter. Now this time we will start things in reverse order. So that means you, one kind. All right. As you can see, uh -huh. one kind has been doing CrossFit uh -huh. at my gym. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I talked about uh, the Global Center and the Global Center is like a Superman to all the foreigners mm. in Korea. So if you have a difficult time living in Korea, I suggest uh, the Global Center for you because they have one in every district. And let me ask you, what was the most difficult thing coming to Korea for you, uh, Amy? Language barrier. Language barrier. So, like I mentioned, they offer free Korean classes. And if you guys want to learn Korean, the Global Center is for you. And that's all I got to say. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do a little free stuff on the top. So check it out. Oh, yo. Let me be your Superman to your super plan. Finna left out in the corner because you a foreigner. Well, don't worry because I got the right solution, the Global Center, the place to cure your pain like ibuprofen. Don't know how to throw away the trash? Well, give them a call because they'll answer in a flash. This is me on a freestyle. One kind, want a job, want to learn Korean, do some Taekwondo? Well, take a trip to the Global Center and they'll provide you with the info. But one thing they can't teach you is this flow. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That was freestyle. That was freestyle. That was just fresh right top of the, the dome. Yeah, spur of the moment, Woo. right? That was for you, Amy. Uh, Ooh. That was the final pitch from one kind. Now let's hear from Jesse. You better freestyle too. I haven't gotten any applause today. When I finished my presentation, nobody clapped. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to talk to you guys about is how foreign students in Canada helped me. Now I talked about how the system for foreign students in Canada provides so much help for them. And through, because of that, a lot of Korean students come to Canada. So I ended up meeting so many different Korean students in my own country and they shared their knowledge with me about Korea, Korean food, Korean culture, Korean music and all those great things. And they're the reason why I'm here right now because of everything they taught me and had me learn about Korean. And I visited here for the first time in 2006 on vacation because of their influence and decided that this is the place I wanted to live. So it's just great to see how it comes full circle. Canada helps them and they help a Canadian. Thank you. Whoa. And now time for a freestyle rapper. off the dome. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse, for your <laughs> final pitch. Now, oh last God. but not least, we have Chungwon from China. Give it up for Chungwon. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> Is this your first time seeing him live? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. It's oh. my microphone. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <Ooh. laughs> 
Hello everybody, I'm your DJ for the today's topic. I will tell you something different about the money. This money only for the student. You and I always can get that scholarship. You can make me fly away scholarship. Give me more and more. Scholarship. <laughs> It's only for the foreign student. If you come to China, be sure to scholarship. <laughs> you can make me fly away. Scholarship. <laughs> Give me more and more. Scholarship. <laughs> It's only for the foreign student. If you come to China. You will get death, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. Wow, Chu wow. continues to surprise us with his final pitch. It just gets better and better every week. Did you write that yourself? Yes. Wow. I like nice. the hook. Yeah, we all liked it. Now, the judges, it's going to be a difficult decision for Man. you guys because you can only have. One <sighs> presenter received the one extra point. So, tell up. Okay, judges, have yes. you reached a decision? We actually were talking about what we're gonna have for dinner, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we do have a decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. Brian, could you please tell us who? We are going to give the extra point to a farewell and the point to Chin. <laughs> I don't, I like I don't mean them. farewells and bye one time. I mean farewell for today, but we'll give him the point too. Right, Chen, right. Yes. Okay, so the extra point goes <laughs> to Chungwon, but we still have the online votes coming, and it is about time to stop. Now, the polls are closing in, and our viewers have voted. Now, let's find out the total score. It's time to hear the verdict. Our judges, our studio audience, and the online voters have spoken, and I have the final results in my hand. Now today, I will give you the scores first. Today's winner earned 69.16. Wow. Whoa! Wow. A lot of points right there. And the runner-up earned 49.53 points, okay. and the third place, earned 40.81 points. So it was pretty close. I will announce today's winner. The winner of today's episode is... Four minutes to give their best presentation. Followed by a Q&A session. And today's winner... Congratulations. One kind. Oh. 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 69.16 points. Wow. 69.16 Is that even possible? Is that even possible? And apparently. Wow. Yeah, all the votes, man. Yeah, I just yeah. want to thank every single one of you guys. Helps working in K-pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the judges and the audience, thank you so much. Right. So, does this mean that we can see you next week all suited up? I mean, I got to talk to Todd, though. Give me his phone number. You suited up this week in a Superman suit. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'll think about it. Well, I mean, if yeah. one kind gets all dressed up next week, I say all the judges be get dressed up next week. Oh, that'd be nice. Oh. Yes. Make it a very formal event. Let's do oh. it. Are you guys going to do it? I'm down. I'm oh, okay. I call so, my boy Tom Ford in America, be like, yo, send me a suit. You're going to wear the tuxedo t shirt. <laughs> right? Okay, so we're going to be seeing a lot of suits in our final episode. Now, one kind is one of our finalists. Ooh. And it's between Ooh. Jesse oh. and Chungwon. Like I said, the points are not that far apart. 49.53 points. 
and 40.81 points. So it was pretty close. The runner up is. Five, four, three, two, one. Panel. Studio audience. Bring it on app. I need on website. Special bonus point. And the final score. Congratulations, Jesse. Oh. Good job, brother. Which means that it's goodbye for Chunguan. I mean, we're so sorry to let him go, right? Yeah, he's awesome. He's, he's given us so many laughs. Thanks he for giving me this chance, and I will never forget. Yes, I love you. Ooh. Wow. We love you too, Chunguan. I mean, you joined late to our show, but you've got so many support from our judges and our online voters, and even from your competitors. Yes. Can't we invite him for a special performance maybe next week? Oh. Like a congratulatory think performance. About it. Oh. Think about it. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's you made his plans come back. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Chungon, you are out of the competition, but we loved having you on our show as a presenter. So let's give it up for Chungon. Well, I need. Well, I need Chungon. Well, I need. Well, and Jesse, you're the runner up, which means that you are the other finalist. Congratulations. Thank you. So I'm going to give you a moment to appeal to the online voters. Well, I mean. Oh, what, do I, what do I say now? Now you put me on the spot. Oh. Well, guys, uh, I'm just a struggling Canadian here in Korea, and uh, I really need your help and support to make it through the finals and to make my dreams come true. Without winning this competition, I'll just be devastated and uh, unable to go on living. So, please. Oh. I kind of want to see that. I want to see how that works. Mm. So let's not move <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have our two finalists, Jesse and One Kind, and let's also give it up for Chun Guan. <laughs> Next week, it's the moment that we've all been waiting for. It's the final episode of season two. We have our two finalists, Jesse and One Kind, and next week we will determine the winner of season two, bring it on. So be sure to log on to our website and our application and vote for your favorite presenter. Now next week we will decide the winner, so be sure to tune in next week as well. Until we introduce all brilliant items from around the world, we will continue to bring it on. Until then, goodbye. Woo!